As soon as we are born, the auditory system gets busy organizing itself to understand the noise-making world. Sounds that are especially important in our world, like speech and music, are given extra attention. This teaches the listening brain about the relationship among pitch bends, rhythm, and dynamics, and what they mean for emotion. We hear how our caregivers use their voices to scold, warn, soothe, and amp us up. Infants respond by using their cries to get attention. This send and receive relationship lays the foundation for emotional responses to music. Sound signals leave the auditory cortex and travel to the rest of the brain through ventral and dorsal connective tracts. Ventral means along the lower portion of the brain, and dorsal means near the top. The ventral connections manage identification, the what is that problem. These distinct tracks work together to serve specialized functions. Music neuroscientist Robert Satori gives an example of playing a guitar chord. When you play a guitar chord, your ventral path represents the sound pattern that you expect to hear. Meanwhile, the dorsal path guides your motor system to position your fingers in a way that memory tells you will produce that sound. Ventral tracks carry musical signals to the parietal and frontal lobe. As the signal moves toward the front, complex operations can be performed. This is where individual pitches are linked into larger units like melodic phrases. This demands good auditory working memory. When a single pitch comes in, the brain must hold on to it and listen to it for the next few notes. This taps long-term memory for keys and scales so that we can judge if a note fits or not. Memory and music are inseparable because, as you will learn, pleasure from music is built upon expectations. Knowing what to expect is based upon all of the music you have ever heard in your life stored in memory. Another job for the ventral path is turning sound patterns into categorized objects, like distinguishing among two different versions of the same song, for instance. The ventral path connects auditory and language regions so that we can attach a label to musical instrument timbres or identify a band or a singer. This path is where sound becomes music. The dorsal path connects the auditory region to the motor cortex. It makes it possible to play and sing music. Dorsal connectivity deals with the where is it coming from and when will it arrive problems. These tracks carry signals to the premotor cortex, parietal, and frontal lobes. The dorsal path is where the signal gets a time stamp. Activity here is time locked to internal clocks, allowing performers and listeners to keep time to a beat. Just as the ventral stream integrates frequency information into melody, or what is that song, the dorsal stream integrates timing information to let you anticipate when the chorus will arrive and where to move your muscles to play or to move along with that chorus. In summary, the dorsal path predicts timing, transposes melodies in pitch space, and synchronizes our bodies to music. Our two ears deliver sound in parallel neural tracks to the left and right auditory cortices. Beyond that, each hemisphere becomes specialized for speech and music. This helps the auditory system as a whole to be more efficient in responding to sounds. The left hemisphere pays attention to small differences in sound, listening for information. The right hemisphere pays attention to timing and the relationship among sounds, listening for intonation or tone of voice. Music with vocals excites both sides of the brain, although some listeners prefer to focus on the melody while others get more enjoyment from the lyrics. In the next video, we'll look at what happens when we sing and review what you've learned so far.